Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa is in for another brutal round of public hearings into ESCOM's application for another double-digit tariff hike. Terence Kremer joins me now to speak about what we should expect. Welcome, Terence. Awesome. Terence, how is ESCOM justifying its request for a 19.9% tariff hike? Well, as usual, ESCOM follows the uh, formula. It's an allowable revenue formula, and they go through a process of asking for certain components uh, to cover their fixed and variable costs, so fixed costs at their power stations and their variable costs like their primary energy costs like coal, and they put it, plug it into the formula, and then you have a denominator, which is the sales uh, figure, which has to be agreed to by the regulator, and that comes up with a, a tariff. So they've gone through that process. It was a contested process this time because the the, the methodology, the multi-year price determination methodology has been updated. And Eskom initially asked for quite a lot of leeway around how they would report into that methodology. And there was a whole a process of pushback from society around that feeling that Eskom was trying to dodge transparency. And uh, there was then a, a hearing around how Eskom should prepare this uh, application. And uh, a nurse gave them some leeway, but didn't fully condone um, their request for a whole lot of uh, reporting leeway. So they put it in again, submitted it again in terms of the rules, and uh, we, we it hasn't changed the bottom line figure. The bottom line figure remains nearly 20%, 19.9% from April 1 next year, so it's a major uh, a tariff adjustment for the year. And uh, they are now, NOSA has to run a process, a public participation process. So they've called for public comment by um, October 13, written comment. And if you're wanting to submit uh, oral presentations, there's going to be that platform as well over the next uh, um, few months. So starting on the October 31 and going to November uh, 16, there's going to be, as you mentioned, a, a really robust round of public hearings because we already can see that there's quite a lot of anxiety around um, this tariff application. But looking at the actual application and going through it, Eskom has uh, kept it quite tight and I think there would have been a lot of focus, for instance, on how much it's asking for its rate of return and there it's cut itself uh, back quite a lot. Um, so it's not using what it says is its weighted average cost of capital around 8%, it's using around a 3% th figure which lops about 12 billion off the revenue application. And uh, it's also stuck to fairly modest increases, although those are going to be contested around operational costs, more or less around inflation rates, whereas in the past we've seen quite aggressive uh, increases on, on costs, on operational costs. And then, but the big thing is that over the last five years of the MRPD3, uh, we've had much higher sales forecasts accepted in the, the, the formula which is the denominator, than what has been achieved. So just simply rebasing uh, to the lower sales growth. So it's, it's we've, we know there's been a disconnect or there's been a divergence between what NERSA approved when the MIPD was first determined and what has actually happened because we've had much lower economic growth. Um, we've had uh, people using less electricity because as the prices go up, we have had a large uh, drop in sales over this period. And uh, that divergence means that that alone, if Eskim just doesn't ask for any operational increases, any primary energy costs, any IPP cost increases, that alone, Eskim is saying, equals, uh, equates to a 9.4% tariff increase from April 1 next year. Terence, the context of this application is almost as important as the application itself. And I think it's really managing that context and the politics that's going to be really difficult for Eskim this time. I think. You know, it does feel in some ways like deja vu all over again because uh, Eskom has been the pariah for so many years and there has been very robust engagements at these nursery hearings and very uh, growing anger at Eskom's continual request for tariff increase during the period of load shedding when a lot of it was down, people felt to mismanagement of the coal-fired power stations, that that anger grew. But I think the current context of state capture, corruption, and general sort of feeling that uh, governance at Eskom is not what it was in the past um, is going to be an important context. And I think it's going to be raised from every presenter and in the written comments that, you know, how can we trust Eskom? We haven't had certainty yet 
on some of the uh, charges around um, uh, the, the coal contracts with Tegeta, around the Trillion um, and McKinsey contracts. So there's a lot of uh, balls in the air around governance and corruption. There's still not a, a happiness around the state of the Eskom board and the state of Eskom governance. We've got an acting CEO who's trying to his best in a difficult uh, circumstance. But I think, as you say, the context of th the context in which this application is made is toxic for Eskom, and it's going to be a very difficult environment for them. So, what do you think will happen this time around? Well, I think we'll see uh, very, very robust pushback, both from uh, the, the, the formal business sectors. We've already uh, heard uh, the Business Unity South Africa raising certain concerns at the recent NEDLAC summit around Eskom and the state of Eskom. Labour is having ongoing uh, un unhappiness around uh, the state of Eskom and the state of state owned companies generally and the governance issues that I raised earlier. And there's also this feeling, you know, that prices are getting to the point in South Africa where it's not going to be very s either supportive of economic growth or of Eskom sustainability if prices go up too much further. And Eskom sustainability, there's this big concern about the so-called utility debt spiral. But it's really at a point where the price point offered by the, the, the power utility is at a higher or tips above the point where people can do grid defection and put in their own generation or co-generation. Usually it's not full defection, but it means lower sales. And because of the way the formula works, every time we dip below the sales that is approved by the regulator, as we've seen for the last year, it has an impact ultimately on the, on the tariff. So that is, I think uh, Eskom will not get everything it asks for as usual. But if you look at closely at the application, there's not much room for manoeuvre if, you, if you're just working within the narrow band of the technocratic band that uh, uh, NERSA has to apply its mind to, which is the rate of return where I've said Eskom's cut right back, the environmental levy where lower sales mean it's going to be lower. The RPP cost is somewhere, I think, where Eskom has put it in, in terms of the DOE's uh, expectations of grid connection for renewables. Now we know there's been a delay there. So that's somewhere where I think the regulator will definitely have some leeway. Operational costs at a sort of a inflation level. Okay, um, people are going to want to see because of the lower sales, is Eskom cutting its cloth to this new environment? And are they cutting back on staff and other things like that? And I think there will be some indication there that Eskom is in a process of reducing its headcount. So from a technocratic stance, a pure technocratic stance, I think they've got a fairly strong submission and it's going to be hard to attack it. But I think that context is very important and it's going to be attacked viciously from the context perspective and the lack of trust perspective. And therefore, it's going to be a very difficult balancing act for NERSA because they have to do what's right, not only for the consumer, but also for the sustainability of utility. But I don't think 19.9% is what Eskom's going to walk away with. But whether, whether it's going to be above 10, I think it's quite likely. Thank you, Terence. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.